Good day. Um, welcome to Paper View. I want to talk to you about origami Lego or something like that. It's modular origami and it allows you to make a whole lot of little pieces and lock them together into bigger structures. The model that I want to look at today involves a thing called Fizz Units. They were designed by Tom Hull, um, a mathematician, very clever man, and they all require squares. Now this is standard origami paper and it's huge. Um, it's probably not suitable for this model. Uh, you really need small paper. Um, I have a packet, I bought this at Daiso. These are really tiny and that's a quite a good size, um, particularly once you understand how the unit works. But really big origami paper is going to make an enormous model. You probably don't want to use that. Now if you haven't got small paper, but you do have access to A4 paper, I can show you how to break it down to get squares that are about the right size. So here's a piece of um, light orange A4. I'll show you how to break it down into squares. Swizzle the camera. Alrighty. So the first thing you do is you take a corner and you align it with the edge nice and tidily, but you don't put a big crease in. All you're really wanting is a pinch there. That's going to be a reference point. So, fold the edge up to that reference point. Align up both sides so that they're nice and tidy. Nice crease. So that's going to be two squares. Flip it over. This is going to be waste paper. Fold it back so that it just aligns with the edge of the sheet underneath. Align it both edges and crease. So here's where you use scissors or a knife. I've got a paper splitter. You throw that bit away, that's waste. These two bits here are the same size and they both represent two squares. Split them in half each. And they are pretty perfect for what we're going to do. Now you need a stash of these. You need 30. So you've got to go and make some. I'll give you some time to do that. It's your turn. When you see this screen, that means it's your turn. Go and make yourself 30 squares of paper. Pause the video, come back when you're ready. All right, let's assume now you've got 30 pieces of paper. I find it easier to do it in colours and for the model that I'm going to do I've got three colours that I'm going to deal with. I'm going to deal with a light orange, a green and a purple. But really any colours that you like and if you haven't got colours just a plain um, construction works just as well. Now I want to make, um, I teach you how to do the model first because that's the central point. If you can get that then there's a boring bit where you fold a whole heap of them. Once you've got all of them folded, then you can do, start the construction. Now the boring bit's really good to do while watching telly or something else. Um, once you get the knack, they're really quick to fold. So long as you are careful and precise, all is good. Alrighty, I'm going to use a really big piece of paper so that you can see how it works. And this paper has colour on one side and not colour on the other side. Whereas the stuff I'm actually going to use to make my model is printer paper, so it's the same colour both sides. This works for um, same colour both sides and colour on one side. But the colour on one side will show you easily how to fold it. Right, you take a square, and it shouldn't be this big, right? It should be smaller. You take the square and you fold it in half long ways, accurately, edge to edge. Nice crisp crease. Then fold one of the sides back down to that new crease. 
So we're folding in quarters here. Then flip it over, fold the other side down. So what you've in fact done is done a zigzag, well a zigzag zig on the paper. You've created an M shaped zigzag on the paper. The next trick involves 45 degrees angle folds. And it's really simple. You start from the left hand side. The left hand side, for those of you who don't know your left from your right, start from that left side. And you take the whole corner and fold it down neatly at 45 degrees. Right, so that's actually two flaps. Next you take the rest of the model and what you're going to do is you're going to fold that edge to meet that edge with making a 45 degree angle down through there. And sometimes you have to help the paper because it wants to bunch. But if you're nice and neat, then that folds all the way down. Nice crisp crease. If you've got fingernails, run them over the lines. Next, we're going to take this whole long flap and fold it along the bottom of this triangle. See, there's this little triangle here. We're going to fold it along the line of the bottom of the triangle up. Make sure that they line up with the middle line here. Nice crisp crease. Next, we're going to take this whole flap, take it that way. Make this edge line up with that edge. Nice crisp crease. Now if you're cleverer than me, you can fold this corner behind. I tend to turn it over. And final triangle in place. Now what you've got is a ziggy zaggy fold. If you open it up, what you notice is that you have a sticky uppy bit here, a sticky uppy bit there, a deep valley in between it. And this model has rotational symmetry as well. It's the same that way and that way. If it's not, you've screwed up. Now, you need lots of these. Um, let me fold another one. Let me fold another one small. I'll go through the process quicker this time. Fold up. Nice crease. One of the edges down. Nice crease. Flip it over. Edge down. Nice crease. Starting from the left hand side. Corner down. This is thicker paper, so you've got to work a little bit harder. The model will be better because the paper's a little bit thicker. Big flap. We do most of the work now with the remaining flap. We leave that corner in place. This big flap down to line up with the corner we just turned down. Nice crisp crease. This flap up to a line. Make that corner nice and crisp. Thick crease. Thumbnails are good for that. Next, this edge again, back down to this edge. Nice crisp crease. And then turn it over to do the final corner down. So whatever paper you've chosen, you're going to need to do that 30 times. You're going to need to make 30 of them. And when you're making them, if you've done them right, they should stack on top of each other because they are the same that way and that way. So you can make colour stacks. I find three colours works best. For the next stage, I will do it big to show you how it works, but you've got some folding to do. Again, your turn. When you are, when you folded 30, come back, look at the next bit of video.
All right, I'm assuming now you've got 30. That's been quite a bit of folding, and I hope you haven't done it all in one go like me, because that's a little bit crazy. It makes your fingers all tired. But you've got 30 pieces ready to go. The next bit, how do we put them together? Well, as it turns out, all modular origami uses a process of pockets and tabs. So the end here is a tab, and it's going to slot into a pocket. We've got to find where the pockets are on these things. As it turns out, it's got lots of pockets. So this little tab here, right beside it, is a bunch of, of layers of paper, which you can open, and that's a pocket. Similarly, there's a big long pocket there. I, have not, I don't use that long pocket, but there is one there. On the other side, there's another pocket. You'll notice that you can open them up. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock units together. And they lock together in groups of three. So I've got an orange unit and a brown unit. And I'll put these two together. In order to do that, I'm going to get the pocket, the tab of the orange, and I'm going to find where it goes with the brown. Now, what we're actually going to do is put the orange into the brown to create that shape when we're done. And if you're observant, you'll notice that this is a little triangular pyramid that we're building. But this needs to go into the brown and we've got to separate the layers to do that. You'll notice that there are, on this side, two layers that we could put it in, two separate pockets. Separate one, it doesn't matter which. Be gentle, try and not damage the paper. And you can slip the orange inside, and notice this line and this line will eventually line up. That's now slipped in correctly. And what the paper has done is it's gone around inside a corner, which you can lock by just creasing that corner that it's gone around. Those two are now locked together. We're going to introduce a third unit. This is the yellow. And we will put the, we'll lock the yellow, orange, and the brown together. What I find is easiest is I find, try looking for a pocket. There's a little pocket. So I'll put the tab of the yellow into the pocket of the orange, slip it until those lines line up, nearly there, done. Do the crease pinch. Next, the final, this brown needs to go inside the yellow to that position. And the only, well, the easiest way to do that is to actually open up the yellow. So I've opened up the yellow. Notice now, you can just see inside there, there's a corner that the tab has got to go around. So there's my brown tab. It has to go inside, and you've got to push it so that it goes around the corner. You can see inside that it's gone around the corner. Once it's gone around and it's neat, you can close up the yellow. Then what I like to do is I like to re-fold re the lines that are already there. What that does is it reinforces the creases and locks those three together. Now locking things together is really nifty because what you've now created is this little triangular pyramid and all of the three bits are locked together tightly. And we build shapes by making a number of these triangular pyramids. So, let me start with the smaller one. You'll see how I go. That's my reference. It's, if I was to build something with paper that big, and if I was to, say, lock a whole bunch of them together into a ball, then the ball would be maybe a metre in diameter, which is a bit big for me. That's why I like little ones. So I've made a bunch. I've got three colours here. I've got green, orange, and purple. 
let me lock a few together and get, get, get you the idea of how you can work out. Now three colors works best for this because you'll never have the same color touching the same color. So green into orange, nice and locked. Got to be a purple, hasn't it? Make a three. So I open up the green to allow the purple tab in. Nice. Then I've got to get the orange tab into the purple. T purple. Need a pocket for it. Open it up and we've got to do the whole push into the corner. See this little corner? Make sure the orange goes around inside the corner. My first proper sized um, point. Next, I'm going to build one here and I can lay it out. So I can actually put a green there, so long as I put a purple there. So I've laid them out first, I've put them on top of each other before I lock them just to make sure the colors sort of work. And you'll notice the purple's going that way and the purple's going that way. The green's going that way and the green's going that way. For this part of the model that makes perfect sense. So I'm going to put my purple to one side, slide in the green first. Open up the pocket, slide the tab in until they line up. Close it down again, that locks it. Now the purple is going to have to go in here. So I'll put it in the green one first because that's I think the easiest. Open up the pocket just a smidge. Slide the purple until the lines line up. Fold, fold, she's now locked. Last thing, orange. Orange goes into one of these. There's two. I can choose either one. I'm going to choose the top one. I've got to push the orange around the corner, deep into that, then close and lock. Reinforce those folds, reinforce those folds. I now have two points. Let's keep going. On this one, I need to decide whether it's going to be a green or an orange that goes this way. So if I go green, if I put the green there, and I put an orange there, does that work? Well, it does kind of. And the greens are going in sort of the same direction, and the oranges are sort of going in the same direction. So I'm not unhappy with that. So I'll give it a whirl. I'll put an orange in. The good thing is, if you screw it up, you can undo it because you're not using any glue. Glue is not something origami people use. Well, I'll try not to anyway. Orange in there, and lock in place. I'll do the green. So open up the little pocket, push the green in. Slide until the lines line up. Lock in place. Do the green one. Open up the pocket in the green one. Make the purple lock into the pocket. Push all the way up inside. When it's all aligned, close it up. Reinforce all of those folds. So now if you notice, I'm starting to get a ring. I've got one point, two point, three point. That's going to be another point, and that's going to be another point. And if I do five points in a ring, then I get a pentagon, and that's what I want. To make a ball, I need penta pentagonal faces. So this is going to actually have a pentagonal hole in it. Let's see how that might look. I'll do one more point. So I've got a green here. I've got to decide what goes where. I think I want to put a purple going that way and an orange crossing this way. I think that'll work. So let's try it. I'll 
put my purple in that pocket. Slide it in, make sure it locks. Get my orange. Open up the purple pocket. Put the orange tab into the purple pocket. And finish off the green. I could open up a pocket in the orange and slide the green around the corner, tuck it all the way in, then close up the orange again. Reinforce those folds because I'm going to need them in just a moment to finish this corner. So let's have a look. I think that's about right. One, two, three, four, and my fifth point about to finish. So I can put my orange into the green. Now here's where paper tension starts to make the model curve. So it, there's a little bit of tension here. The model is trying to pull itself apart a bit. And that's not a bad thing, because that will actually cause it to curl. So I want to put my purple into this pocket. Use my thumbnail just to open up the pocket a little bit. Just to make enough room for me to slide the tab of the purple in. And make sure that the lines line up. Nearly there. Beautiful. And you see the orange tried to pull itself out a little bit. But that's okay make the corners and it won't. We lock them into place. I've got to put the green tab into the purple and I've got to push it around the corner. So in there, push it into the corner. And close it up again. So we've got our first five corner face. One, two, three, four, five. Notice all of the points have three different colors. No two colors touch. And in a five, we've got two of the same color, two of the same color, and because it's a five, one of the third color. So then you would start building again. There's gonna be another pentagon here, and another pentagon there, and another pentagon there, and another pentagon there, and another pentagon there. Adding units as you go. And you can see that the more units you add, the rounder the ball gets. The paper tension pulls that in. So I've nearly finished this one. I can nearly close the ball to be complete. Because if you notice, for example here, there's one point, two points, three points, four points, five points. So those two have got to be connected um, by a unit and they'll make the fifth point and it pulls that rounder. Similarly, one, two, three, four, five. That one's nearly done. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, this one's only, only partially done. When I add another point here, then I'll probably be able to combine it with some of the ones behind. Although this looks like it's, near, it's a long way off, there are only about oh, eight units left for that to be a ball. Now, for those of you who are observant, you'll notice up in the corner, window, there's actually uh, an example that this, this takes time. Here's one I prepared earlier. That ball um, is 30 units and I used um, five colors, which was a, a mistake in retrospect because it was really, really hard not to get the same colors touching. And you can see I used the same process of folding a whole bunch of modules, sticking them together, um, not sticking, sorry, locking them together. There is no glue in this model. You don't need glue. Now, once you master the basic techniques, then there are some really nifty stuff you can do. A five, five points, curves. 
So you get a, a positive curvature. With five, you get a bowl shape. If you lock six points together, it goes completely flat, no curvature at all. So you can actually could actually make a whole sheet of units made on bunches of six that were completely flat. Seven, on the other hand, does something really weird. It does what's called negative curvature. So it actually creates a saddle. Now, why would a saddle be useful? If you think about the shape of a saddle. It's got a it's a curve, not a lump. Right? When you put your bum on it, it's got a, a cup-shaped thing for your bum. It would be uncomfortable if it was a lump. So the cup-shaped thing is called negative curvature. The bump is called positive curvature. Now, you can combine positive curvature, no curvature, and negative curvature into something that is quite crazy. That's a thing called a torus. Notice it looks a bit like a donut. That one was huge. That was a mistake. Interestingly, it was made with modules that were the same size as this. Originally, that was going to be a Christmas wreath on my, on my um, front door. It turned out to be bigger than a truck tire when I finished. About 700 modules, it took an absolute age to fold. But you may be able to spot that on it there are hexagons, pentagons, and right in the middle, in the donut hole, there are heptagons, sevens. To get the donut hole, you need negative curvature. To get the sides, you need zero curvature. To get the rounded outside, you get, need positive curvature, which is pentagons. So pentagons, hexagons, septagons. That's something to try once you've mastered a basic fizz ball. You should try have a, have a go at that now, right? Your turn. You've got some folding to do. Nothing breaks when you try. And if you screw up a bit of paper, that's okay. Refold another one. Give it a whirl. Let's see what you can do.